all there a warm hello. I'm Nirmala Guru, a leadership coach and an organizational development consultant. I'm really honored to be associated with My Ventura Care on the social initiative amidst the situation that we are facing today. This social initiative aspires to bring in more positivity, more awareness, and definitely learning. To start with, a quick fact. Do you know an average person has about 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts per day? Astonishing, isn't it? And during the situation, what we are in now, usually in the crisis situation, it's around 80 to 85% of them are not very positive, they are negative. And 95% of them are repetitive in nature. Well, as we all know, watch your thoughts, it becomes your words. And watch your words, it becomes your action. It's very imperative and crucial at this junction to check on our thoughts and thereby our words. Positive language can go a long way impacting your brain functioning and definitely can create an impact in your being as well. Well, on the flip side, the negative language can bring altering to your emotions and play with your way of life. Well, it's apt to say language is a clothing that we have on our thinking. So why not dress it up really well? Why not dress it up for the occasion that we are in today? So let's make our words more powerful, more meaningful, and definitely more charismatic and attractive so that it's definitely going to influence us and more definitely others around us. Well, to start with, I would recommend to you five best practices that could boost our positivity through our language. The first practice I would like you to follow is practice praise. Praise is a very, very important trigger. It triggers happiness and it brings in smile definitely to the person who is praising as well as the person who is receiving the praise. Praising genuinely without any reservations, without any strings attached, definitely promotes positivity. And praise is, should not be stringent where we need to praise ourselves too. So self-praise is a best positive pity booster. And the second practice that I would like you to implement is practice speaking solutions and addressing not the problems. When you start addressing the solutions, as we all know, every problem comes with a solution. But we focus too much on the problems and leave out the solutions. But instead, let's focus, let's start to focus on the solutions. For instance, when we say to ourselves sometimes, I forget, I keep forgetting a lot now these days. When you say so, it's, it's better to watch on the words and correct ourselves or rather we could say that Maybe I should start keeping reminders so that I don't forget. You know, you are giving a solution for the habit of forgetting. And when we always criticize the situations that we are in, we, uh, we say the situation is uncertain, we say the situation is bad, we say the situation is uh, quite alarming. All these words are going to pull you down. Rather, we, we know what the situation is, we understand the situation, we accept the situation. So why not say to ourselves and to others, let's, okay, the situation is so, let's get the best out of it. Let's see how we could work on the situation and make it uh, useful to us. Now, you see the shift. We are trying to shift to the opportunities. We are trying to see what we could get out of the situation. And it's definitely a positive booster to say everything is going to be fine. All is going to be well. So my going ahead, the third, the third best practice I would want you to follow is practice respond and not react. What's the difference? Responding and reacting is the two extremes. When you react, you are just reacting and you're not thinking. But when you're responding, you do think. A simple example in our day-to-day -day life, you enter a, your room and you see your child has created a havoc and uh, she has created a mess. What do you do? 
you start to lose your cool. You start, it's very natural to yell at the child. Instead, think for a moment, smile at the situation and respond saying that either I could help you to clean your mess or you could do that. So whichever is your choice, let's do it. You know, so we are trying to trigger a solution here to we are responding to the situation there and not reacting. So that's very important. And the fourth best practice is practice gratitude, which is thank you. The thank you word is the most powerful word in this universe. When you genuinely think and thank, it revisits the pattern of the glass being really half full rather than being glass half empty. Thank you is such a powerful word when uttered it brings it, it it actually makes your emotions go very stronger and more positive i would also request you whenever you are texting in your mobile it's quite natural for us to just go in for the shortcut as thanks and uh, thank you with the cue but rather we could put your word full word thank you with the name attached it definitely makes a lot of sense it definitely brings in a lot of emotions mostly positive ones and last but not the least, my fifth practice I would like you to implement is positive self-talk. Self-talk is a very nice way of saying it, a polished way rather. What we could actually uh, know about self-talk is the inner chatter that goes on in our mind endlessly, even when we are asleep. So it's very, very important to have a check on our self-talk. Self-talk could be very very disempowering and sometimes self-defeating so i would recommend you to use words which are encouraging and more enhancing rather than using the words like such as absolutes never always for instance whenever you say i've never done this in my life you stop yourself you are stopping yourself to experiencing something new you enter into a very very rigid mood when you say i have always been like this i don't want to have a change when then you're becoming very inflexible you're not welcoming change which is definitely a need change is inevitable if you want to grow you need to change right so think about the option of avoiding these words as like always and never and the most important word i would like you to read out is should the word should is very punitive in nature. When you say, I want to work hard, it's a want. But when you say, I should be working hard to get a promotion, I should be working hard to get a good grade, or I should work hard to, you know, or, or I, rather, I should work out this year. So when you are saying should, it is a force. And we all know force doesn't work well, as one does, right? So it is very good. And it is quite uh, uh, encouraging to avoid words like always, never, should. Right. So these are the five practices. Just to have a recap. The first one is praise, practice praise. Second is practice addressing solutions, not the problems. And the third one is practice gratitude. And the fourth is practice respond, not to react. And the fifth and the most important, practice positive self-talks. We all know negativity is contagious so is positivity so when we are contagious with our positive thoughts positive words positive being definitely it's going to be a better place for us to be living in and for us to have more positive people around it is always good great and excellent so let's spread positivity and have a safe home stay and a safe uh, safe life and be happy always with a smile. This is Nirmala Guru signing off. Thank you so much. Until we meet next time.